hello there and um today i want to talk about a topic that is somewhat uh thought provoking and uh have you often wondered you know why people you know get discriminated against or why you know all these implicit biases exist in uh, the healthcare system and uh, today i come across a uh, an article you know and uh, what i was published on the 11th and uh, on the 11th of April, that is just, you know, a couple of days ago, about um, the racial biases in uh, maternal child health and how to close these uh, racial biases. And this is what we're going to look at, you know, today is to look at how we can close, you know, these racial biases in maternal child health. We're talking about maternal uh, health specifically right now. And with that, I say welcome to Treasured, a channel that is meant to inspire and encourage women, you know, around the world. And today, I want to talk about a topic that is really dear, you know, unto my heart, and which is which is a little quite uh, thought provoking, you know, to me. I just, you know, came across this article this morning, which was published, you know, by the Nineteenth News, and uh, they are a news uh, independent news organization that is based out of Austin, Texas. Um, but this um, actually took place in Virginia, and they were reporting on it. And uh, Neda um, Hassani stated like she is her article, she published this article. And this is about um, closing the racial gap, you know, in maternal um, health. You know, so they ex this is their own experience. This is what, you know, this uh, dollar has experienced. And dollar, those are people that usually just... Um, they help to guide, you know, uh, women through childbirth, you know, uh, process. And uh, they coach them, you know, through it, you know, and work with them. So she was the one who had this experience that her patients, you know, are complaining, her uh, black patients and also Hispanic patients, they are complaining about, you know, the biases that they experience when, you know, they go for, I mean, uh, healthcare, uh, treatment. So let us look at this, you know, article, what it's actually talking about. And this is something I want us, you know, to discuss as, you know, a people, especially when it concerns women, women's health. And uh, you know that something like this is kind of, is there to me. And I, you know, also, you know, worked in maternal child health for so many years. And that's why a topic like this, you know, really resonates, you know, with me. And, and it's something that I have even, you know, kind of experienced, you know, that I know this, it take, it happens in the healthcare um, setting. Sometimes it happens in a very subtle way, you know, these implicit biases against pe uh, women of color, you know, pregnant women that come to the hospital for delivery or for, or for care. Sometimes these biases are subtle, but sometimes they are very, you know, pronounced and noticeable. And you often wonder, how are we going to, you know, actually, you know, dismantle these, you know, implicit biases in the workplace and also especially when it has to do with women's uh, care and uh, women's health. And that is, you know, what this article is all about. You know, they, they found out that, um, you know, most women, they are complaining, you know, that when they go for, for care, you know, for their, you know, prenatal care or they go to the hospital to have their babies, they are often dismissed, their complaints you know, and issues are often dismissed by clinicians, you know, that are supposed to be t caring for them, often dismiss it as if it really is, no is it is oh, it's normal, or they dismiss them that, okay, um, not giving them the care that they actually need. That is what this article is talking about. And uh, this was just published, you know, um, on the 11th, like I said. And um, this uh, dollar, she herself, even she tried, she posed, to just see if what her clients are complaining about, if it's actually true. She gave an example of one patient, you know, one woman was told by doctors that um, swelling, pain, and warmth in her legs was normal. When this lady complained about it, you know, despite, you know, uh, warning the clinicians that she had a history of blood clot. So, and then this dollar, uh, her name is Southern Earl, she, I mean, she urged her to visit uh, the emergency room. So Tess actually found out that this um, woman, the pregnant woman, indeed had a blood clot, a situation that, you know, can be deadly if you understand, you know, about um, maternal child health. So this is something that I want us to look into. I want us to talk about. I am still trying to understand why, you know, these implicit biases or I would say unconscious biases 
I mean, exist, you know, in our healthcare system and what we can do, you know, to overcome this and to dismantle this. Whether we like it or not, you know, there is always a racial, you know, undertone in, you know, our healthcare system and it's even more pronounced in some organizations than others. You know, believe me, <laughs> I have been in the healthcare system for a very long time. And when I tell you this, even as a, a, a black woman, a, a black healthcare professional, you take it from me. It does exist. So let us not try to debate whether it's there or not, but let us find a way to dismantle it, to overcome it, so people can actually get the health care, women can get the health care that they actually deserve and not be discriminated against by, you know, the color of their skin, you know, or their ethnic background or, you know, their socioeconomic status. So this is something that I want us to actually bring to the forefront. If we, you know, want to empower women, we are for women's health, we want to support women. These are issues that we must advocate, you know for that and also you know for this you know to stop and how we can overcome this in our society and then also i like the fact that this article did not only criticize the actions but also the writer talked about what can be done to overcome you know these biases we don't have to debate whether these biases exist or you know or these uh, unconscious biases exist when patients come to, I mean, receive care in the hospital, it does exist. So let us, you know, move past that and let us start thinking about how we can address these issues, bring them, you know, to the forefront and then find a solution to it. And then one, she talked about, you know, training, you know, for uh, healthcare professionals, you know, training about avoiding and uh, for them to be aware you know, of these implicit biases and know how to, you know, overcome them. So, you know, we are not directly or indirectly discriminating against people based on the color of their skin or of their socioeconomic background. Now, that is one aspect, but this is my own take on it, which is great. They can have workshops. Some hospitals have mandated uh, some training, you know, uh, training uh, about implicit biases how we can, you know, avoid these biases because they know that these biases exist. That's why this training, you know, is in place, you know, to help uh, people, I mean, to, so they are aware. It's an awareness. It's bringing it to our consciousness that this, you know, um, exists. Let's find a way to deal with it. So, uh, number two, this is what I find, though, from my own experience. Now, people can take uh, training, which is good, some people will take the training because it's uh, it's a mandate. They are mandated to take that training. It's a mandatory training based on you know where they work, and then they just some some of them just do click 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 and then they read it and click on it and then they are done. Sometimes it does not really change you know their actions completely, but for some people it does bring it to their awareness that these implicit biases you know, do exist you know against. Uh, women of color, pregnant women, when they come to the hospital to seek care, they are often sometimes, you know, indirectly sometimes discriminated against based on the color of their skin. And their complaints are often dismissed sometimes. Sometimes, you know, even their actions are even misunderstood. Sometimes you see some nurses we just write on the patients when they are uh, narrating about pa the patient's behavior. Sometimes they want to label the patient as aggressive, um, non-compliant, you know, and then people who come behind them, you know, to read those those charts, the patient's chart, it colors their own, um, their own bias, their own um, decisions on how to care for the patient. It influences it whether we want to believe it or not. So you are reading, you know, in the patient's chart, you are coming on and you are reading about, oh, this patient is uh, non-compliant, is, uh, uh, sorry, aggressive. So these are issues, these are things that we need to be careful of before we start putting it, you know, in patient's chart because these are, these are things that also create biases 
you know, within other healthcare uh, professionals who are coming after you and then they want to care for that patient as well. We are talking about women here, women's health, you know, so maternal health is what I'm talking about. So how do we ensure that pregnant women, they get the care that they deserve without being discriminated against based on the color of their skin? And then you talk about training, number one, you know, that... Uh, medical personnel so actually in all fairness some states have actually mandated it it uh, it has been legislated and also they have mandated it you know i know that california is is one you know where it has been mandated i think delaware about four states or so they have already mandated it that uh professional healthcare professionals need to take these uh courses uh implicit bias uh courses so you i mean it's mandatory they have to take it so they are aware that these biases do exist but some states other states some states maybe over even 20 states or so uh, or even more that have not really you know legislated this and uh, some of them even uh this this article because this took place in virginia they were even talking about the virginia legislation the uh the legislature i'm sorry they are looking into it and, you know, to, I mean, put a bill together, which they said they are going to send, you know, to the governor's office to, to sign. So, but the governor has not stated whether he's going to sign or not. So that is still in the works. Because this uh, was reported, you know, from um, the state of Virginia based on this article. And then um, also they're talking about um, awareness. Medical healthcare professionals need to be aware that these this, uh, unconscious biases do exist. Let me tell you, these biases, they existed at the workplace. They exist, you know, in the healthcare, you know, um, system. And it's something that negatively impacts women of color. So it's something that we do need to, I mean, address. I don't, I am still trying to understand why people discriminate against other people or they are biased against them just because of the color of their skin or their ethnic background. God didn't create, you know, one, he didn't create uh, black people different from this one. They are not created differently. The Lord created, you know, everyone, you know, equal, whether black, white, regardless of the color, you know, of, you know, um, our skin. So why do people still discriminate, you know, against people or these biases exist? Because to me, I think it's something that is systemic. It's not only something that is an individual thing because the, the system has, you know, allowed this sometimes to prevail for, I mean, to continue for so long, you know, that people come into the system, they're like, oh yeah, you know, uh, you know, we, we should not look at people like that based on, you know, the color of their skin. That is how we decide if we are going to provide excellent care for them, you know, or we don't. We are there to, you know, give, you know, provide care for everyone, regardless, you know, of their socioeconomic background, the color of their skin, you know, or the, that is why. So this ratio, this um, health uh, disparities, these disparities that we have in, in maternal uh, health is something that needs, you know, to be addressed. Well, something we need to look at. They said mandating trainings for healthcare professionals, which is great. But what about some, um, this culture of the organization? Have we looked at that? Because I can say that these things also, you know, the, the rate or the extent, I would say, of um, these biases sometimes is even is more exhibited and more pronounced in some organizations compared to others some organizations do not tolerate they have you know um very zero tolerance you know for things like that and some organizations they know it's there they will, they will tell you they, are, they don't tolerate it they are handling it but they never really do anything about it so that's another thing so sometimes this is systemic it's not only for individuals to just they mandate these courses um, about implicit biases. Yes, that is great. That's good. About, you know, for the individuals. But what about the organizations themselves? What about, you know, uh -huh. so what about the systems that we have put in place? Is it really providing, you know, equity 
across the line for, I mean, all women, or is it one that discriminates against, you know, or favors one, um, one ethnic background or one race over the other? So that's something we need to look about. Look at this is from the CDC, and I I pulled this um, statistics up myself. Even if I read it in the article, I have to verify it before bringing it to you. So the CDC reported. The CDC, for those who don't know, is the Center of Disease Control, you know, in in America, in the United States. So anything I'm talking about, these things I'm talking about, I'm talking about the United States. I know I have, you know, uh, listeners and, uh, you know, viewers from, you know, are, are across the world. But I'm speaking about what I'm familiar with right here. So now, this report updates a previous one that showed maternal mortality rate. Listen to this. Maternal mortality rate for 2018 to 2020. So in 2021, 1,205 women died of maternal, uh, of maternal causes in the United States compared with to 861 in 2020 and 754 in 2019. So the maternal mortality rate for 2021 is reporting on 2021 now was 32.9 deaths per 1,000 life births, compared with a rate of 23.8% in 2020 and 20.1% 20 in 2019. So it also showed the, the, the table. You know, there's a table to that. Now, in 2021, listen to this, please. The maternal mortality rate for non-Hispanic Black, subsequently Black women, is what we're talking about here, was 69.9 deaths per 1,000, sorry, per 100,000, 100,000 life births. So the women that delivered babies, out of 100,000 life births that delivered babies that are, you know, alive, viable babies alive, out of that, so it says women... Uh, black women was 69.9 deaths per 100,000. So what does that in, how does what does that translate into? 2.6 times the rate for non-Hispanic. That is white women. Subsequently white women. So you see this? So this is from the Center for Disease Control. Even looking at the, the disparities, the rate at which you know black women the mortality rate of maternal uh, maternal mortality rate between black women compared to white there are other factors that play into this though but let us we are addressing now the issue about receiving care sometimes there's no access to health care Sometimes there is, I mean, the lack of, you know, um, access to healthcare, that is one issue right there. So there are other factors that play into it. The fact that you see this disparity alone is something that we need to look into and we need to address. So how can we address it? My own thing is for us to educate ourselves. Let us start by educating ourselves you know, and bring this, you know, and this, you know, awareness in the consciousness of healthcare professionals. Let us understand that these um, implicit biases do exist, but we need to find a way to dismantle it in our healthcare system. I don't want the video is already getting too long. I would like to hear your your take on this, you know, topic, you know, as well. And I'm hoping that I can bring other medical, you know. Uh, persons to discuss this issue with us in future videos and uh, don't forget to share like and subscribe to our channel um, i see you next time bye bye